So my practice in spine, because uh, it inv involves both non-operative as well as operative care, on the operative side, I do mostly a minimally invasive spine work, but I'm also trained in, in traditional spine. So there are times where for a patient, the, the minimally invasive option is the best, best alternative, and there are times where it is not. And so we try to custom make the, the pr procedure instead of get into the mindset where I do X, Y, or Z, and I do the same thing for everyone. I think for most patients, in fact, the majority of uh, patients, you don't need anything beyond a conservative approach. So that being a time uh, uh, doing, doing medications, anti-inflammatories, uh, therapy, maybe injections. So most don't need a surgical intervention, but for those who do, that is the right approach. And we try to not jump into it, obviously. So I do teaching on different uh, levels. We teach residents who come through our office, and we also have uh, training where I fly off to, to uh, different centers and help uh, other surgeons uh, learn minimally invasive techniques. But no, as far as the approach in the office goes, uh, you know, every patient has their own uh, problems and, and other set of factors, work and life and such. And so we try to customize care, individualize it to your condition as well as your life. Uh, there is a big role for physical therapy. Uh, most patients uh, need it as a primary treatment option and don't need anything beyond that. Uh, there are uh, times where, where it is used post-operatively. A, a lot of these minimally invasive procedures don't actually need it, but a lot of them do. And when, when it is needed, we chart the program and then we follow it uh, by, by staying in com communication with the therapist. Nowadays, there's not much distinction between neurospine and orthopedic spine. How, however, historically, it was the neurosurgeons who did the decompression, so they would free up the nerves, if you will. And then it was the orthopedic uh, surgeon who would do the instrumentation, i.e. put screws and plates and things in the spine. Training now is, is such that you're trained in both aspects. Um, training in neurosurgery, uh, I do think is still a little more focused on the decompression side while, while on the orthopedic side it is more, more geared uh, towards doing the instrumentation part. And, and so the advantage of, of uh, dual training where you're actually going through both programs is, is you do get that extensive experience on both sides and I think that helps with patient care as well as optimizes outcome. A minimally invasive surgery is basically you are uh, trying to uh, minimize the amount of tissue disruption. So it's become a buzzword, but I think the principles of it is that you're trying to attain the same goal, which is to unpinch nerves and or stabilize the spine. It's how you do it. A tr additional surgery was more, um, more, more invasive in the sense that you would cut the muscle off the bone to gain access to the nerves. Minimally invasive is aimed more at doing a um, non-disruptive or a minimally disruptive tissue surgery. So you don't do a lot of collateral damage before you get to the nerve. And there are different uh, 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 procedures which are used. So a common one we do a lot is called the X-Lift, which is a brand name, but it's, it's a direct lateral uh, approach to, to the spine where you come in from the side and, and so you don't cut all the back uh, muscles. And so that's one. We also do some minimally invasive uh, screw placement, and we recently just did the first one here in the United States called the facet link. And that's basically a way to uh, fuse the spine with the screw but not use rods uh, so you get the stability uh, without the tissue disruption. I think that success after surgery is really defined by the patient. Uh, it, it depends on your goals. So we have so we have athletes who have been able to get back to sports like golf and running and basketball, uh, which they were not able to do before surgery. Because I think it's very exciting uh, what is happening now. And I think that, that over the next 10 to 20 years, spine is gonna change significantly. Uh, and to be a part of it and to help uh, facilitate that change is, is extremely exciting. And I think in time, it will only improve and uh, help uh, patient outcomes and, and and just enhance patient recovery after these procedures.